Hey everybody, I'm Josh Talker. Yep, Josh Talker, host of the Before the Echo podcast. You've probably seen a lot of his videos on the Hunting Beast, and now you get an exclusive look at his trophy room. Here we go. All right, so right now we're standing in my gear room. I remodeled this barn seven or eight years ago, and one of the stipulations, I wanted a place to have all my hunting stuff in one spot where I can work on it, keep it organized. That's my gear room. I want to go into the house now. So this is where all the editing for the hunting bee stuff that I do and before the echo happens. Not a lot in here. I, I also run a couple other companies, so it's just hectic in here and a mess. But I will talk about these these two deer up here. This right here I found in Ohio, actually not too far from Exodus headquarters. Found it in a swamp up there. Threw it up on the wall to fill in some space. But this deer right here, um, none of this on my wall is mine, but my uh, this is the biggest deer my grandpa ever killed. And it when I was growing up, it hung. This is the house my grandparents built and, and lived in, raised their family in. This deer hung inside the garage here, and it was just a skull plate mount like people did back in the day. And it was just covered in, like, pioneer hats and a bunch of farming hats. Was it, So you could never actually see the rack. But after he passed away, we bought the house, and I ended up putting it on one of those Montana mount things and hanging up here. And this is a deer my dad killed with a bow when I was real little. It's not really anything special to him, but for me, I remember it because I, I just remember him dropping the tailgate and seeing this deer they killed with his bow when I was a little bitty guy. This deer, my dad built a house uh, just next door, kind of between moves. He needed a place to hang this deer. This is his deer. It's a giant deer. I think it scores just under 170 as just a mainframe, perfect 12 pointer. He killed it on a deer drive, actually. Uh, and I was gone. On this particular time this particular time and him and my uncle and my cousins killed him on the deer drive he was the dog pushing the the deer and he said for some reason he, he was walking along he stopped to adjust something and uh heard something behind him and he turned around and that buck was standing 20 yards behind him so i'd say if he would have just kept walking that deer probably would just laid there and they never would have known it was there but he uh him stopping and messing around made him nervous and the deer stood up and dad dad shot him and that was the end of that one so Big deer. That's my dad's biggest for for sure. So here's kind of where I keep all my my stuff. We'll kind of start with these these sheds. I got this idea from Steve Shirk on your guys's on on Whitetail Cribs on his uh, Whitetail Cribs episode. These are pretty much for the most part all public land sheds. That I find I, I find very few on on private around here. At least the private farms I have permission on don't typically find a bunch of sheds on them. Uh, some of the bigger ones. This is a giant. Uh, I found. Here in the hills I mean, a couple years ago i actually found it in the summertime checking checking cameras but just a big giant uh five point side i don't know I, I can't remember what it uh ended up scoring us had it scored at one point in time here's another another cool cool deer that we found in the hills just a kind of a freak has a bunch of kickers on the bases and some splits on the g3 there I won't bore you with a whole bunch of shed talk, but I'm trying to think if there's any other cool ones. This is a kind of a, a funny deer here. So I was walking in the hills in, in the Hoosier National here and I picked up one of these sides. I can't remember which one it was. It's probably this one. I just picked it up. I'm like, oh, decent side, you know. And I was walking down the ridge and then this one was laying there. Well, this one had a string attached to it. And then I got to looking at the other side um, and this one has a hole through it too right there. It was someone's rattling antlers. They must have been walking through the woods and dropped their rattling antlers. And I found them. I don't know, they've been laying out there for a while. But pretty funny set of sheds where I got excited about a deer. Thinking it was going to be a decent one and then realized it was someone's shed antlers. I'm fortunate enough to have all my deer in one spot here. I'll talk about some of them. Uh, this deer here, one of my smaller deer I've killed actually. But probably my... One of my favorite stories to, to tell. I shot this with a bow during gun season on a piece of public around here. And it was, I had a rough year. I can't remember exactly what year this was. Maybe 2019, 7, 16, 18, 19, something like that. It was raining like really hard one Saturday. And I and they kind of had a schedule to stop in the, the evening. Well, at 11 o'clock, I decided to go ahead and make my way into the stand because I was supposed to stop. And as I was walking in, I was glassing some bedding areas, and I saw this guy bedded down in a bedding area. And um, I snuck up on him on my bow to like 15 yards and shot him. I sat there on my knees waiting for him to stand up. And when he stood up, um, I shot him, and um, the rest is history there. To be honest with you, I thought he was a lot bigger. If you're ever on the ground with a deer, they, they look a lot bigger standing 15 yards from him. But I was still pretty proud of him. Is a cool deer on public land that I don't get to sneak up one morning in the bed that close very often. This deer is on the beast. 
Um, this is the biggest longbow buck I've killed. I killed him last year. Actually, just you could see my tree stand from here if the crops weren't in. Um, and, I, and the farmer tore all that woods out this, this last uh, uh, summer. So uh, where he was living is no longer there. But, yep, I killed that one October 9th, I believe, last year with a longbow. Just a nice nine-pointer. Nothing too crazy. This deer's on the beast, too. Shot this deer in high school, uh, probably 17 or 18 years old. Cool deer, has really, really long G, or, uh, broad tines. He was in an overgrown um, cattle pasture. Long story short, we were setting, we set up on the edge of this cow pasture, and a group of does came in, and I shot, shot a doe, and the does ran through the cattle pasture. This buck stood up on the other side of it, not knowing what was going on, and then he walked into uh, our, our setup, kind of looking around, seeing what those does were doing, I guess. And I, I shot him at 47 yards. This is one of the longer shots I've ever made on a deer, but that was a, a cool hunt with a buddy. He, he filmed it. It's on the Hunting Beast channel. This is my very first deer. I killed this when I was nine. That's why the mountain looks so old. It's, it's getting getting some age on it. I shot it with just a smooth bore 20 gauge, like all we all shoot our first deer with. And my dad wasn't, he was, he bought me a summit climber for my Christmas gift that year or the year before and I got good with it over the summer at nine years old you know I had to work work at it a little bit but he was sitting I was sitting in one tree and he was like uh probably you know 20 or 30 yards over from me in another tree in his climber and uh, that deer came out of the a bunch of ridges that went down to a bedding area and he opening day came up um the, the ridges uh, to, to where we were and I I shot him and and killed him when I was pretty young this deer, nothing real special about him. I shot him with a rifle a long time ago here here in Indiana. Uh, this deer is pretty cool. Just a nice, it actually has an 11 pointer. It has a kicker off the back here. Um, shot him when I was 15. And uh, the only reason I remember how old I was was because my mom, Grape and I just vividly remember him because he he was one of the few deer that I shot him and he took like two jumps and then just fell over dead. It was a cool hunt. None of that's on camera though. That was when I was young. This is just another deer I shot in Indiana a while back. Probably I think I shot him with a rifle. I shot him out. Of, actually, the only deer I've ever shot out of a shooting house. I shot this out of a shooting house that me and my cousin built back in the day. This deer. This is on the hunting beast. This is a Wisconsin buck on public land up there. Um, killed him November fourth during. A uh, little bit of a ruddy, ruddy time, and he was real worn down. I think he only weighed like 165 or something like that when we weighed him, but really cool deer, lots of points on him. Um, I think he has like 14 points that you could score. Dark, dark horn buck, and you can see that one on um, the beast. This one is on the beast as well. This is a shot with a bow in Indiana a while back. There was a finger that went out into a cornfield. He was bedding on that finger and he, he came in right before dark and I, I shot him with a bow. Uh, and I had a little, that, that year, I remember the year before, I had a horrible season where I wounded two, two deer with a bow. That uh, next year I was, I, I shot him, perfect shot, and he, he ran like 20 yards and fell over. And even though he's not real big, it was a, it felt good to like get one where I'm like, I killed him and I killed him clean and right. And I'm not, you know, looking for him all night and being disappointed. So that's kind of why he's up here. This deer, one of the biggest bodied deer I killed. Um, I cry killed him when I was 20 or 19 years old, something like that. Um, it was raining really hard the day I, I killed him. It had kind of stopped and was just sprinkling. I, I, I remember my dad like asking me if I was going to go or not. And I was like, yeah, I might as well go. You know, I think it's, I'm not going to get too wet. And I went and set up on this little pinch that was in between two bedding areas. And there was a fresh scrape there. Not fresh, there was a scrape there. And I got up in the same climber that I killed all the other ones in back in the day. And he, uh, he came in shortly after I got up in the stand. He was, he was really upset, like, he was rubbing trees and um, he cleared that scrape out. And then as soon as he got done clearing that scrape out, I, I shot him and he ran about 60 yards and, and piled up. This is on the 
Beast YouTube channel. This is the deer from the Battle of the Bows I killed in Wisconsin last year. The river, I shot him in a river bottom, and me and Dan actually saw him the night before we were driving home from uh, a hunt, and he crossed, he, he was out in a field right across from a piece of public uh, that uh, was obviously public so you could hunt. Um, the, the field was private, but to me it looked like he was coming from the public into the private crop field just because he was so close to the road, and we, we, we weren't very far after dark is when we were going through there, so it kind of told me he probably didn't come from that woods way back in there. I think I shot him October 19th, so getting to that time frame where getting close to the rut, but not really a rut deer. He, I shot him, uh, kind of him coming out of a, uh, oxbow in the rivers where, uh, he, he was bedding, bedding up in and he came through and I, I shot him. This is my second deer I ever killed. Second buck I ever killed. I was nine when I shot that first one and I was 10 when I shot this one and I shot him out of the same exact tree. I shot that, uh, when I, when I was nine, we lost that, uh, little piece of property the year after that. I only got to hunt it two years. Um, but shot him by myself though. This is my first deer I shot alone. My dad wasn't with me. He was down and he kind of got me set up and went, went on his way. And I think he was even walking up the exact same ridge as that one. So it was a good little honey hole we had for a second. Got me hooked on deer hunting. That's for sure. This deer, this is my, my biggest hit scores in the one fifties. Just a, just a perfect 10 pointer. I shot him on a piece of private I have, uh, around, around here. He was, uh, it was during rifle season and there was some does out in this crop field, uh, cut corn field. And I was just watching them along, uh, I was sitting along the creek and they were out, out in the field and I was kind of just hidden in, the, in a little brush pile or something. And I heard something splash in the creek and I looked over and he was like standing at 25 yards. I shot him with a 30 out six at like 30 yards. And uh, yeah, that was uh, definitely my biggest one. My uncle was with me, my uncle Brian was with me hunting uh, when I shot that one. Kind of, kind of a cool deer, it's my biggest one and the only deer I've really killed with my, uh, my uncle. My Uncle Brian, at least. And then these are all just some European mounts. I got a few more back in the kids' room and stuff. But uh, let's see here. This is my Ohio buck from last year. That's on the Beast Channel. Um, just, a, just a nice little eight-pointer, good out-of-state buck. This was uh, my Nebraska buck from last year. he just come out of velvet. I don't know if you can see it or not on camera, but you can see all the veins that were running through his uh, velvet, and it's still all there on his antlers. I'm not sure exactly how long he'd been out of velvet, but it wasn't very long. I shot him September 1st. Uh, those two I killed with a bow, just in Indiana, back in the day. This one's kind of a kind of a crazy story or a crappy story, I guess. In high school, I uh, I used to film for a guy. This deer came in while I was filming for him, and he actually let me shoot him, which was nice of him. Well, I shot him, and he he ran into a what his his sanctuary on the farm, and he actually didn't let me go and and get him, and uh, yeah. We found him the next year during shed season, and that's what I got it left of him. So kind of a crappy deal, but as a kid, you know, I didn't, couldn't really defend myself much. But let's see here. This deer, another bow kill. This is kind of a cool, cool story. I shot this on a deer drive with a bow. My cousin was getting married, so all the family was in town. And it was during October. Uh, some, some of my family members that lived out of state wanted to go deer hunting and wanted to get a deer. Well, uh... We kind of ran out of time sitting, and my cousin was getting married that afternoon, and we decided to do a deer drive. And I was setting up along a river in a little pinch, and he came, he came walking right to me during the deer drive, and I shot him at like, I don't know, it was probably seven or eight yards right through the chest. Don't recommend doing deer drives with a bow, but it works sometimes. <laughs>